Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. And these, these boxes right here, I'm having a funeral for them because they're going back to Navian. All these three dead heat exchangers we swapped out in the last week. A moment of silence. Oh, Navian, you've been so good to us. You should be more reliable, delivering safe and comfort to us. May you rest in peace. That was very, very heartfelt and thoughtful. Anyway, for the moment you've all been waiting for, drum roll, please. As you know, earlier this year, I introduced Mikey Pipe's first official sticker. I'm calling it version 1.0, right? Highlighted the use of the Testo Combustion Analyzer and also, is that a rigid pipe wrench? I don't know, it's a Mikey Pipe's pipe wrench. Look, it's orange. And also highlighting my good old saying, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. Well, you guys loved it. I sent out over a thousand of them and I ordered another thousand of 1.0. But then came 2.0. Look at that, guys. Mikey Pipes, official summer 2021 sticker. We're calling it version 2.0. I got the Bosch heat pump condenser in the background. By the way, they're not sponsors, but maybe they will be one day. You guys know I love Bosch. I got the yellow jacket refrigeration manifold right there. Some hoses that, let me see, oh, we got three of them there. And I'm also rocking almost a pan of gold. <laughs> so if you would like a sticker, details are in the description box down below. And if you care to donate to the postage fund, not only are you going to get version 2.0, two of them, I'm also going to send you two version 1.0s as well. I'm going to put it in an envelope. I'm going to mail it out to you. Regardless of where you are in the world, Mikey Pipes delivers. So make sure you thumbs up this video because we're rocking and rolling, heading off to our first job. Some AC maintenance, and you never know what we're going to run across. Stay tuned, thumbs up, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Time, timer flash, seven times, BT system. You ain't testing, you're guessing. Good morning. Vaccinated? Yes. So am I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you never know these days. <laughs> exactly. There's some anti-vaxxers out there. Yeah. It makes no sense. Okay. Here for maintenance for you. Right. Um, so I have two units. I actually have three units. So I have one's not going to anything. Okay. Um, I mean, they work generally. You just, I, I think you, are you, you're the owner? Yes. So you live near my Justin Strauss. Yeah, right across the street. Right. So he's one of my best friends. So oh, he cool. told me, he said, yeah, you never got a check? You got a check. <laughs> um, one of them makes a funny noise. Okay, I why? think it's just because somebody put a plate on about whatever it is underneath it that is not level. Not okay. Down, right? Take a look at it. Yeah, uh, let's show me the two thermostats and the filters. Filters I just changed. Perfect. The units are on the attic or in the basement? One, one in the basement, one in the attic. Okay. Um, this is one. Okay. Cool. Um, That's for the first floor. That's for the first floor. And then I got one upstairs. Okay. Let's go see the one upstairs. Let's go up on that. That one's heat and cool. at the top. I typically, you know, blow out the drain lines. Okay. Um, try to check the that's coil. The, that's the only problem we've ever had. Yeah. Okay. We check the coil, um, you know, both indoor units, and then we'll check outside. Sometimes there's more focus outside, depends on how they're installed. So let me go up there and see. The higher switch on your Perfect. Uh, I don't think, well, you need to go there's a little room back there. Okay. <laughs> it's like a hidden little closet here. 
Where is it? A mana. Okay, and that's a single line, no trap on it. So that goes all the way to there. Okay, let me see. All the way around. And there's a T. Interesting. Where does that other line go? I think the other line is probably from the old unit. All right. This is the old, the old system. All right. So on the existing condensate drain line, usually we have a trap, and, we'll, and maybe I'll show you the one downstairs where, kind of like under a kitchen sink or under your, your sinks. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, that one doesn't have it. What I want to do is though, because it's still this is still connected, not being used, I want to cut that out, cap that line. That way, none of this is going to back up. And then I'm going to blow out the line strictly to outside so we know we're good. So it's worked fine for all these years. So I'm like hesitant to recommend putting in a trap. Why waste the money if it's worked fine? The but trap is, for, is to keep it from getting backed up? Or? It has to do with pressure, uh -huh. believe it or not. Um, with plumbing, the trap is to prevent sewer gases from being coming right. out of the drain. Right. On, on air conditioning, the trap's purpose is to fill with water and when air is moving across the, the air handler from the supply to return, the water in the trap, it's hard to explain, but the water in the trap helps prevent it from being sucked out. Okay. But if it's worked fine for all these years... So we've had that one is backed up in the past. And that's why you'll see there's a tin underneath it that I stuck there once. Yes, yeah, saw that. Up. Okay. So I'll just blow, I'm just going to cap that and blow out the line, and we're good. I'm, I'm industrious. Hacks <laughs> up, I think. <laughs> why not? It works. All right, so let's just see the one in the basement, and then I can get stuff from the trunk and go from there. All right, here's the one for the first floor. <laughs> They're using an open air return and just shoved in this filter. See, that's the trap I'm talking about. Fills with water. Reverse attack. Let's take a look at this coil. Well, she's not crystal clean, but not terrible either. It'd be better off if they had a filter. This track right here would have been nice. Had a filter there. You slide it in. But then again, the trap's in the way. They weren't thinking. All right. He's saying the bathroom, the bathroom vent stopped working after they spray foamed. So I'm going to take a peek in here, see what we see. All right. Let's see what we got in here. Looks like they dug it out. Got a bunch of ducks there. <sighs> Looks like I'm going up there. <sighs> All right, I made it in here. Looks like everything's connected though. <sighs> How's your hole? By the way, you see all this stuff? Looks like cardboard. It's aerocell asbestos insulation pipe insulation it's all over here another piece over there look it's just littered everywhere another one there all right let me get out of this hole he says it's working now i just the lever was in the wrong direction no all right now we're focusing on the air handler txv that's right there. There's the sensing bulb. It's inside the cabinet. Looks fairly decent in there. Let's test this capacitor. One here, like one there, one there. Okay. Uh -huh. 
She's no good. She's no good when you take out this five micro microfarad uh, capacitor for the blower. All right, I didn't have any ovals that would fit in there, so I threw in a round and took some 516 screws and this piece of band iron secured to the back of the cabinet. So now she's good. Everything else is okay. Let's button her back up and head outside. I always check to make sure they're functioning before doing anything. This is the second floor unit, the MANA. This is that train American standard going to the basement. And just turned the thermostat on, she kicked on. So electrically, we know the systems are functional. Now we can check out everything else. Hear that humming? It's like a sizzling sound. It's like they're at Sizzler cooking a steak or a little grill, Peter Smart's grill. It's got a nice grill. By the way, Peter Smart's got a very nice backyard. All right. Just that contactor. I got the disconnect pulled. Is it the time delay relay? Just a Let's see. No, it's contacted. See that? Looking like. Alright, we just gotta check that booster right there. Booster. That's the relay for the, the booster, the hard start. Alright. These things explode when the relay doesn't turn off and it stays in the circuit. Contactor. All right, replaced the contactor. Took the M18 blower, blew out the electrical compartment. Now we're gonna take a look at that hard start relay right there. I mean the cap. She's leaking. Let's see what she's looking like. Yeah, look at that. She's toast. She's toast. So when we came out here, he said, we're keeping this for parts. I started to laugh, but uh, you know, and I offered to change the contact, and he goes, can we just use the other one? I was like, well, I won't. <laughs> so, here's the other unit. And it's just the uh, same exact mess. Look at this. Abandoned in place. This should be a, an abandoned episode at Brightside, uh, was it Brightside Films? Is that that YouTube channel? The Brightside of Life? He's got an abandoned playlist? Look at that. <laughs> Oh, I love my job. Take this out, take that out, give them a hard start. So this black thing right here, right, gives your compressor even more power, right? And as you can see, it's done, toasted. It used to be mounted there and all the corrosion there. And this is the relay that controls it. And the other one in the same condition. Yeah. Okay. Um, it probably hasn't worked in years. Um, I'm gonna try taking it out of the equation and see if the compressor still works. Again, at the end of the day, you need to replace this unit. Mm. The, the coil is shot. You have moss growing on the bottom of it. <laughs> um, and again, I, I, if it's salvageable and it can be fixed, I'm all for that. But sometimes it's not cost effective. Um, just food for thought, because that one's even worse. Garbage. <laughs> um, I don't even know if I have one, but let me check. But let me see if it'll run without it. What that, what that do that would run without it? The compressor needs it. No, so why would it run without it? But sometimes <laughs> it will. Okay. Sometimes it will. So. I guess it's been running without it now. Yeah, but let's see. Let's take a close look at this Amana three ton system for the second floor. Literally 
coil is crumbling apart. You have moss growing in there. I don't think this is a dog, dog issue. I think this is just lack of maintenance. And when you have, start to have moss and mulch growing, it starts eating everything. So he's got that 36 and that model number, she's a three ton. Look at that, you see right through there. Saint Mike, may you be blessed. May you be blessed, Amana. Be well. God bless you. So you know, I, I guess I could have pushed, uh, pushed a little bit harder. You know, I am the quote-unquote super tech. But you know what? As soon as he told me that he wanted to use that abandoned condenser for parts, I knew what I was dealing with. And that's okay. It doesn't make him a bad person. It just makes him a different type of client that, you know, than, than usual, you know? But, you know, he knows that unit is shot, right? I showed him, you know, the coil, you know, literally how I put my finger through it, literally put my finger through it. And uh, listen, you know what? Uh, it is what it is, you know? It, it's... Does it require rep replacement? No. Is it recommended? Yes, of course. That unit is beyond repair. And if anything, by me replacing the contactor, just prolonged the inevitable. Seriously. And <laughs> it's basically some of the shit that I run into on a daily basis. You know what? You could bring a camel to water, but you can't make a drink. And... You know, it is what it is. But as soon as he told me that he was gonna, he intended to, to use that abandoned a mana condenser for parts, I knew what I, what the client I'm dealing with. And like, like I said, it does not make him a bad person, but I just it just changed the path of the service call. That's all. That's all I'm saying. All right, I'm going to another service call. So we're making this a double feature. Uh, I've been going to this customer for two years now. This is the second year that we're going out for his uh, carrier central air system. Uh, it uses R410A. Last year, during my first initial visit, uh, we found the system severely undercharged. And he didn't really, he's, 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 he knew in his head that he needs to replace it, um, but didn't want to go through the expense at that point. He told me, listen, Mikey Pipes, just pump her up with R410A. Uh, you know, if you want to throw in that sealant, you know, maybe, you know, it's rolling the dice. I was like, sure, no problem. So we're going now to the service call, see what happens, and I'll get some good footage of that, and we'll see. Maybe it could be a system replacement job when we go out there for the service call. All right, stay tuned. Make sure you you know support this channel by hitting that thumbs up button. You know, by you thumbsing up, it helps the algorithms of you know the YouTube and Google and all the other good stuff, and you know it, it extends the reach and really helps the channel. So more people see this video by you thumbsing up it, it helps me out. You love Mikey Pipes, Mikey Pipes loves you. And let me tell you something, I got a great giveaway planned in the very immediate near future where I am going to make people rich. I'm dead serious. And, I, and I'll give you a little hint. It's all about Doge. Alright? If you don't know what Doge is, you need to get out from under your rock that you're living in. And... Um, Check it out. All right, stay tuned. Good morning. Good morning. You want me to wear a mask? I don't care if you do or you don't. I'm wearing one only because I thought you did. I have, I'm, I'm fully... Me as well. Okay, that's the current, current trend these days. Yes, how you been? Good, thank God. How was your winter? It wasn't bad, so my back is screwed up. I'm sorry. Yeah, what are you going to do? So they told me that um, when you turned it on earlier, it didn't come on. It came on, but it wasn't, wasn't cool. So I remember last year we had to pump it up. Yes. We put in the dye with the sealant. I'm going to start in the attic first because generally if you have a leak, it's on the coil, the evaporator coil on the right. attic. Well, on that knee wall you have at least. And um, if it's there, then we'll talk. If it's not there, then we'll head outside. And so you got a filter ready for me. Yeah. And okay. uh, I guess you could, could you do it again what you did last year if it comes to that? Uh, yes, we can. <laughs> you know, but you, you pro if if we it, let's see what's going on first. Okay, that's fair. you know, let's see let's see that first. That's fair. I'll change the filter because it's uh, is it dirty? Let's take a look. Sure it is. 
Let's see. Let me get some light on that. Yeah, she's dirty. All right, so well, let me just take a peek at the air handler. Okay, thank you very much. All right, all right here. In there. All right. Filter access panel. It's covered with duct tape. I got a few more screws. Uh, all right. One more down there. Oops. TXV and your sensing bulb is right there. That's a coil. She's clean. I bet you that spot right there is our die. Let's get the light. I'm gonna turn off. Oh, that's reserved for the Amana side of the cross. All right, come hold your lot of light. tell you something it's never this easy by the way <clears throat> never this easy <sighs> all right now that i've professionally diagnosed an evaporator coil leak now we're going to check out the system pressures and i'm going to try to explain the benefits of replacement which is not having to add several, several pounds of refrigerant per year and reliability, you know? I have no idea what's in the system right now as far as amount. All I know is that last year we added several pounds of 410A to seal it with the dye, and this year it's not blowing cold air. Let's go check outside. System's basically empty. Give me good news. How are we doing? It's basically empty. Really? Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Well, what we can do is the thing in replacing the evaporator coil at you know that obscene price that York quoted us, and plus markup and then labor and then refrigerant and all that other good stuff. Um, the thing is, it's the there's no real easy way of testing the outdoor unit to see if there's also a leak there as well. Right. And there is, but it's just time consuming. We have to pressurize it and then right. wait and come back. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, ideally your best bet is to replace the system. Now I know you are selling the house and that may not be, you know, to your benefit, you know, it'll be the benefit of a new homeowner, of course. but uh, you may weigh that. Alternatively, you know, we could pump it back up. Did it work all last season? Yeah. And last year we added like six pounds. And your call. Pro pro professionally, I, you should replace the system. Okay. Alternatively, professionally, we test the outdoor unit. Again, this takes time. Time equals money. You know, I like to be cost effective. Your, your system, it. your system is, you know, not like a top of the line system. You know, it's made by York, and professionals hate York because they use micro channel coils, which are prone to leaks. The micro channel coils outside, by the way. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know, so if if we replace the evaporator coil, 
you know, there may be other leaks present, but we would we would go down. If, if we're going down that route, I'm making sure that there's nothing else going on. Yeah, no. If we replace the air handler, I'm also making sure nothing else is going on. Right. If I replace the entire system, well, then I'm guaranteeing that, that I'm not married to this, you know, for future repairs. You know, I'm married to it for future maintenance, like we've done for the past right. two years. So, but it's also an, a very big expense. You know, we're not talking you know, just replacing, you know, a couple thousand dollar job, we're talking, you know, it depends on what kind of car you want to buy. You know, I could sell you a Hyundai or I could sell you a Bentley. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what would you recommend? So, to let's put it this way. If, if money was no object, I would recommend a Bosch system. It's super quiet, it's very energy efficient, but it's also super expensive. It's at the top of the line of the food chain. Well, I don't want to right? that. So, I'm not so alternatively, um, Carrier, in my opinion, makes great systems you know we can get something like you know a 17 two stage uh, two stage system which is considered higher efficiency than you know lower lower than that we can also go with offshoots of carrier you know carrier also makes a brand called Bryant it's cheaper it's identical um, it's just different color comes with the same warranty um, this you know just as an option what are your thoughts what, what, what would you what would you I, I what would you like the outcome to be? I know you want the, the, you want a nice, cool home, and you don't want to have any worries or aggravation. Right. Unless I do a thorough job, which I love to do, but it takes time. And right. I, I like to be cost effective. You know. I understand. You know, it's like when I do. You know, when you know these older R twenty two systems, you know, started to leak, and there's not many of them left anymore. And I'm telling customers, listen, we could spend a thousand dollars doing a leak a leak search. Right. Literally. Yeah, no, I don't want to go through that. You know, it's, it's just not cost effective. So if the system was new, it's worth the investment of time. But it's not new. It's not new. And it's it was a builder's grade system at the time. Okay. And it lasted for many years. It didn't last that many. Take my word for it. Anyhow, how's this for thought? If you fill it. Yes. And it stops in, within a month or whatever. Then we'll go the route of the whole thing. Okay. With a, 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 you know, a different system, not as expensive. Okay. I will. I will do that. Okay. Be right back. Okay. No this way, at least, you know, it could last. It may. And I'd be thankful. Yeah. So, it, it, listen, if we added the same amount we added last year, and last summer you were fine, chances are you're gonna be fine as well. But let's just see what happens. All right. What do you think? What do you guys think? Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Did I do a good job explaining that? What would you have done differently? And, you know, let me get some, some real criticism. I don't want to hear, you know, the trolls with this stupid nonsense, right? Um, this, is, this is a profession. This is a, my career. And I am the owner of the company. And I need to present information to my clients the best way I can in ways that they'll understand. You know, we added 6.5 pounds of R4 10A to the system last year, added a sealant with the dye, and if I'm adding that again this year, well, guess what? He'll be fine for the rest of the year, and hopefully he's, you know, he has good morals, and he'll tell the, the buyers that, hey, listen, you know, I got a problem with the air conditioning, but every year I add, I add some uh, refrigerant to it, and it works. And as you heard him say, listen, if it lasts a month or two, then we'll, we'll cross that bridge. But um, let me know what you think, how that conversation went down. Let me fill this up. If you haven't done so already, Thumbs up, St. Mike commands you to thumbs up. All right, stay tuned. Let me charge this up and get back. Yep, tell me about it. It's my numbers. Try to go with a little bit more, but I'm hesitant because the system came charged with six pounds, four ounces. I do have a mismatched. Um, Air handle. The air handle is a four-ton air handle. This is a three and a half ton, and uh, my line set seven eighths and three eighths. Not that long of a run, but I'm real hesitant to uh, add that much more. I think maybe there's something else going on there. Maybe that TXV is not doing its job. But um, my uh, temperatures coming out of my supplies, my diffusers are uh, at 51 degrees, and it is. 63 in the house, so quite comfortable right now, leaving it like that. So let's uh, check out with the uh, homeowner and move on to the next.
If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. And seriously, really, thumbs up this video and get me your give me your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. You know, it only takes a split second to hit that little thumbs up button, and it really, really helps uh, to grow this channel on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Mikey Pipes loves you. You love Mikey Pipes. And if you want brand new version 2.0 summer 2021 stickers, details are in the description box down below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. God bless you and your family. Stay well. Stay safe. Oh, my God. Totally unexpected. I go in there, you know, to finalize everything and get paid. And he goes, Mike, just replace the system. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah. I was like, all right. I'm like, what do you want? I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna have the, the, the realtor tell the the the, the, uh, the new buyers that listen, he's got top of the line, you know, AC HVAC system. I was like, you sure? Like, you want the Bosch IDS 2.0? He goes, I want what you have in your own home. And I was like, oh, well, don't say it like that because I have a Bosch IDS 2.0 two-ton system for 900 square feet of my master suite level, and then I have a Bryant two-stage 17 sear three and a half ton system for my main floor, which consists of the living room, dining room, and the kitchen. I was like, so which one do you want? And he goes, give me the Bosch. I'm like, deal. We'll get it done in the next couple weeks. And he goes, next couple weeks? You can't do it tomorrow? <laughs> Thumbs up, guys. Be well.